Honorable Lennox Andrews, Minister for Economic Development, uh, Honorable Adrian Thomas, Minister for Agriculture and Lands, <coughs> uh, interna uh, international representatives from ICA, FAO, GIZ, <coughs> other international bodies, um, Mr. Aaron Francois, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, and Mrs. Gemma Bain Thomas, uh, Transition Lead in the Ministry of Agriculture also. Uh, special Representative, Dr. Francis Martin. Um, distinguished Farmers, and if you permit me, led by Farmer Patrick Simmons. <laughs> Um, distinguished women, farmers, and women farm vendors who are here today. Uh, SIEP, our own homegrown Grenada uh, Transformation Organization, led by Byron Campbell. <coughs> All other agricultural <coughs> and farm leaders of Grenada, participants, beneficiaries, welcome. And let me wish a happy World Food Day, a few days late, um, but in the spirit of the season <clears throat> of renewing our food production, our food capacity, our food availability, let me salute yet another celebration of World Food Day here in Grenada and to congratulate FAO, the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations, for its work in securing food in the world and for putting this day on the international calendar. I notice that I am down to make a special presentation, and I notice we have a long roster of speakers. So I have some prepared notes. Maybe I will simply put them on the website and just speak briefly and uh, deeply from my heart. I am the daughter of a farmer. I would say a successful farmer because he was, to me as a child, successful as an export farmer. He had nutmegs, cocoa, but he exported bananas every week. And he was very proud of that, and so were we because you know, growing up in St. Andrews, as a, I would uh, get the opportunity with him to come to the port um, to ship bananas. I'm a very proud daughter of a farmer who fed the family through f food produced on the farm and uh, earnings from export. I'm the daughter of farm country, that is St. Andrews. And um, food excellence, food abundance, uh, food sustainability is in our DNA like the rest of Grenada. <clears throat> and um, I grew up, went abroad, and came back. And before I returned, one of the first things I did, which most Grenadians do, is to buy land. And I bought farmland. And um, I could confess in some confessing already. <laughs> I could confess that I have not done with the farmland what I could have done and should have done. I'm not sure if it's because I'm a woman. Um, I think sometimes politics got in the way. Sometimes my own life and agenda got in the way. But I have for farming a special place in my heart. Today I secure about 90% of what I eat every day from either the sea or the farm in Grenada. Um, or from local producers. Every day I, I check my plate. Very, very rarely I have anything or 10%. Um, as a product and admirer of the land, I know that the land gives us food, feeds our bodies, but the land feeds our spirits. The beautiful flowers we have here um, come from the land. Uh, it's horticulture, but it's a part of agriculture. The herbs that we use, and I'm sure Dr. Martin will speak about that. Uh, a lot of our 
balance and our medicinal uh, treatments come from the land, from herbs. And I see a, a, a land man, the guy who takes people walking up and down the length and breadth of Grenada. So the land gives us that opportunity for recreation and so on. Where are women in all of that? That's what I'm asked to speak about. Well, we, we are here really in a very powerful celebration, World Food Day. And in many ways, it's a celebration of women and men and people. Because as our PS said, our food is a place where we meet. You don't have to be Italian or Grenadian to know that. The whole world knows that food brings us together and keeps us together. <clears throat> As a general principle, therefore, <clears throat> unjust gender bias undermines the social fabric and devalues all of us, not just as a human rights issue, but when we have imbalance in human relations between men and women, <clears throat> unfair practices between the sexes in agriculture or elsewhere, we have a tremendous waste of, of, of the world's human potential. Now, in Grenada, we do have this imbalance of men and women in agriculture, and I'll give you some statistics shortly. Let us just acknowledge, for example, that although this is changing, men have had the lion's share of power, including land ownership, training, finance, and other resources in agriculture. And women have had the lion's share of domestic work to make the farm work, secretarial work to make the farm institutions work, and lower earnings overall in agriculture, either from land ownership or from the products that they sell. And so by denying women equal rights, we deny half the population of a chance to live at their fullest and a country to take, its, take out its fullest. Political, economic, and social equality for women, therefore, must benefit all citizens at home and abroad. And together, let us pledge today to further eradicate any prejudice and work towards equal rights and respect for women. We'll do so against the food crisis, which was mentioned, the COVID crisis, which may be receding, and the general health trauma and conditions that the world is going through. Um, in Grenada here, the crisis has manifested itself at least one way, in food prices. Food is exorbitant, especially if you are low income or you are like me, a senior citizen on a fixed income. <laughs> And I think this is the ex an extending crisis that we, address, we have to address by making food more available um, in prices. The crisis is also undermining Grenada's attempt <clears throat> to meet the SDG goals, the Sustainable Development Goals. Goal number one, to end poverty. Goal number two, to end hunger. Goal number three, to have good health. Goal number four, to be uh, educated. Goal number five, for gender equality and the empowerment of all women and girls. And so hunger, malnutrition, absence of well-being is on the rise around the world, as we heard from the FAO. And uh, good research suggests that we, are, so we stand to lose some of the gains we have made here in Grenada. So let me just give a little statistic before I end. According to a very old 2012 census for, of agriculture for Grenada, it showed that females make up just 29% of the agricultural sector, although they are 50% of the total population. So while women make up only 29% of farmers, we account for only 10% of agricultural workers. Now, at least you think that women are not being left behind because we've moved out of agriculture into nice, cushy jobs. 
That's not the case, as most women, the majority of women, occupy or remain the majority in the lower levels of work in the country, as clerks, secretaries, low-level entry jobs. We are being left behind in various sectors. And so for women not to be left behind, let's say particularly in agriculture in Grenada, there must be a greater emphasis on providing resources, land, and we welcome the emerging land use policy. Women must be provided technical uh, access, access to technical support and to, so that they can further expand their capacity. A male farmer in Grenada is more likely twice as much to earn all his income from farming than is a woman. She has to supplement with various, various different activities. Right here, there is a woman in this fishing boat providing fish to Grenada, and there are two other boats are alongside her, and the other two are men. And that's one in three, which is very high in this particular you know, instance here. But by and large, you know, her income, or the income that women get from food, selling food, is not able to sustain them. They've got to supplement it, and that must change. More than 80% of financing for agriculture provided to farmers was given to men and less than 20% to female farmers. And I believe this is a global statistic. But in Grenada, access to finance for, for agriculture in general must be improved, but with particular attention to women, in, uh, women farmers and women workers. Um, I think I want to congratulate all the uh, initiatives in the government and in the NGO sector where women have seen great improvement in their role in the sector. That is changing from my childhood, from my father's era. Yet, uh, female farmers have significantly smaller farms than male farmers. The average size of farms headed up by women is 1.57 acres, but for men, it's almost three, three acres. Women manage only about 4,000 acres of land compared to 17,000 acres managed by men. Indeed, men also manage more land than women at all age groups. And accessible, accessibility and affordability of agricultural lands for women, especially young women coming out of school now, must be an area of priority. We could go on to irrigation systems, <coughs> production equipment. There is an imbalance and a disproportionality that favor men. And women could get left behind. So we encourage uh, all of us, women as well as the men and the government, to make sure that no one is left behind who wants to work, live, and thrive in agriculture. In closing, let me say that Grenada can secure more of its food from agriculture from, from here at home. We're making a major initiative when you look at the great exhibition there. And I myself have participated in hosting many a farmer's night market to make sure that healthy food is visible, affordable food is available. And a lot of our rare foods we tend to see at farmer's night market and at farmer's markets in general. So it is proof I'm saying that we can secure more of our food from, from agriculture for our security, but we, to do that we have to transform the sector and a major part of the transformation has to be to value what women are already doing and to make sure that they are rewarded for all that they will continue to do. Happy World Food Day, and thank you very much.